If you've ever used a MetaHuman in Unreal Engine, then chances are you've run into an issue when using them. That's why today we are troubleshooting the most common issues with MetaHumans. Welcome to Virtual Production Insider. I'm your host, David Stapp. And I actually want to start this episode off a little differently by saying thank you to everyone who has been tuning in so far. We've just hit the six month mark of Virtual Production Insider being a channel and putting up content. And the reception has just been insane. You guys have been showing up, have been showing a lot of love. And I just wanted to say thank you for all of the love, all of the support, all of the growth that we've seen. And I'm super stoked to see where this channel will be six months from now. So again, Thank you. So now back to the reason you're here, and that is to look at some of the most common things you might run into when using MetaHumans, especially when it comes to creating cinematics in Unreal Engine. A lot of these fixes can apply to the game development side, but most of the time when I'm running into these issues, it's when I'm creating cinematics. So let's take a look at the first one, and this is probably the most common one that people run into when they start using MetaHumans, and that is the LOD sync setting. When you first import your MetaHuman into Unreal Engine, it's going to have a setting that automatically dictates the quality quality of the appearance of your metahuman based on the distance of the camera. So you can see I've got a metahuman right here. I just imported him in and I haven't changed any of his settings. And you can see as I start to back away, you're going to see that his hair and his skin start to kind of change as I get further away, right? And what's happening is it is actually diminishing the quality of the metahuman as you get further away because it's kind of like how Nanite and other features work. Whenever you get further away, it's rendering less of that object. But when it comes to cinematics especially, we want to have the full quality over our metahuman. So what you can do is click on your metahuman, come into the blueprint here and switch over to the viewport so we can get a good look at him. And I'm actually gonna slow my camera down so I can get up close to him. So I'm gonna start to back away until we see the first kind of pop on the hair there. That means it just changed its level of detail. So you're gonna see over here on the left side, the LOD sync. That stands for level of detail sync. And basically all you need to do is click this, come over to the right side here and look for the forced level of detail. Basically, we're gonna tell it, hey, we want you to stay at the highest quality possible no matter what, That no matter where the camera goes, no matter how far away we are, we want this metahuman to stay at the highest quality. Now, this really does apply to the cinematic side, but if you do want to force that to the highest quality, just take the forced LOD and we're gonna change that to zero. And you can see all the detail just popped back in and now no matter where I go, no matter how far away I get, it stays the same. We don't see any pop in the hair, no change in detail, no change on the skin. And just to give you an idea of what those different LODs look like, you can actually start cycling through them. So we can look at LOD1, LOD2, LOD3, LOD4, LOD5, LOD6, and LOD7. And as you can see, LOD7 literally looks like a PlayStation 1 character. It's basically potato mode. And that really is something you could consider if you need to optimize your metahuman way far in the background because it's going to be rendering a lot less. And you can visualize that by hitting Alt 2 on your keyboard and we can switch to the wireframe mode here. And this will actually give you an idea of what level of detail is really doing when it's switching between those. So this is LOD 7. You can see it's not very dense whatsoever. If we go to LOD 6 and if we go to LOD 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and zero, now you can see it is much more dense compared to say LOD7. And so that really is what it's doing is it is diminishing our metahuman. It's diminishing the amount of polygons, the amount of detail in the actual textures, things like that. So that is how you stop the appearance of your metahuman from changing based on your distance. Now for our next fix, we are going to look at the actual groom, the hair on your metahuman. And if you've ever used grooms, especially longer grooms, longer hair on a metahuman, you might've run into an issue where the hair just goes wild. That's actually part of the reason I chose this character was to visualize this, but if I take this character and I just move him around, see how the hair is just moving all over the place, and that is real-time physics, which is great in theory, but sometimes whenever you're moving your metahuman around or if you apply animation to them and you start to render them in sequencer, you might notice that hair just starts moving way too much, might go crazy, might get stuck in a crazy position. These are all things that I've run into in the past, and sometimes you might just want to turn that off. You might just want to stop the hair from going crazy. Now, there are ways to dial down the physics of the hair, but we're going to look at how you can actually turn off the simulation altogether if you just wanted the hair to stay in place, especially for more subtle movement on your character. So once again, let's hop into the blueprint, edit in blueprint, viewport, and we're going to look at the hair here. So let's go to hair 
And then down over here on the right side, you can actually visualize the hair that that metahuman is using. This is the groom asset. So we wanna open up the groom asset here, and you can see there's our groom asset right there. We can kind of visualize what it looks like. And so now, all you need to do is come over here to the physics tab. You're gonna have all these tabs up here for different things. And what I like to do is just come over here to physics and I like to turn off enable simulation. And so now if I save that and I switch back to my character and I start moving him around, his hair stays in place. His hair does not bounce, it does not move. And so if I apply animation to him, that hair is going to stay where I want it to and it's not going to get messed up. Now this really does apply to more subtle movement on your characters. If your character is doing like flips and fight scenes, you are going to need some simulation in your hair or else it's just gonna look rigid. But for more subtle movement and just like dialogue scenes and things like that, this is a great solution from stopping any issues with grooms. All right, next up on our list is if you've ever applied a animation to a character in Sequencer, you might run into an issue where your animation just stops working on your character or doesn't work from the get-go, and I'll show you one of the most common things that might be causing that. So let's bring our metahuman into a sequence here, and by default, whenever you bring a metahuman in, it's going to have a control rig applied to the body and the face. And this is fine because the control rigs are great for making adjustments to your metahuman, but if you've ever come in here to your body, gone up to animation, and let's just apply a random animation. So I've applied an animation I got from Actor Core, and this is just a standard animation of someone just talking, right? And whenever I hit play, nothing's happening. We've applied the animation down here, but we're not seeing anything. And the reason for that is because this control rig for the body is overriding that animation. So now there are two different things we can do here to fix that, to get that animation working. The first thing you can do, and this is the quickest fix, is to right click on that control rig and convert it to layered. And now once we do that and we hit play, now the animation is working. It's because we have told the control rig to basically be additive. We want it to be combined with the animation. It's layered on top of it, right? And so now the advantage there is you could actually come into the control rig here, click on it, hit the G key to actually visualize the control rig. And now we can actually make real time adjustments to our metahuman and actually layer them on top of that animation that we've applied. So if we wanted his arms to bow out like this, and now we hit play. Now his animation is gonna keep playing and his arms are gonna stay up in that place because we've basically layered that on top with the control rig. Now, I have run into issues in the past with layered control rigs, and the other method I'm gonna show you has become kind of my preferred method whenever I want to have a control rig alongside of a stock animation. So I've deleted the animation out, we're back to the default metahuman character, no control rig offset, anything like that. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to reapply that animation, there it is. Once again, not working because we haven't set it to layered, but what we're actually going to do is right click on body. We're gonna bake to control rig and choose the metahuman underscore control rig. What that's going to do is take that stock animation and apply it to a control rig with keyframes that we could change and offset. So there you go. Now you have this control rig with all of these keyframes applied to all of the different body parts. And so we could actually remove keyframes, update them, anything we wanna do. But what I've found is I like to collapse that one hit the plus button, hit additive, and now we're adding an additional control rig with that one, it's set to additive, so it's doing the same thing, it's basically layered with the other one, but I found this one to be more stable and lead to less issues down the road. One thing you do wanna check is that the range of your additive control rig covers the entire animation, so I like to just take both ends and just kinda of go before and after the animation, that way we know it's covering the whole thing. And so now with this second control rig, I like to name this one, just click on it twice, and now you can rename it. I'm just going to add underscore offset. And then this one, you can keep it the same. I like to call it underscore baked. So now you can go to your metahuman and click on any of the body parts. You wanna make sure you're editing the offset metahuman control rig. Uh, and now we can just offset that. We can set a little keyframe and now his arm is gonna stay up as he talks. And now that is another layered control rig that can help you do offsets to your metahuman. And so if you ever see that your animation is just not working on your metahuman when you apply it, the most common reason for that is that a control rig is overriding that. All right, let's talk about custom clothing for metahumans. There are a lot of different clothing options out there on the fab marketplace that you can get to apply to your metahuman. But if you've ever done this and noticed that, oh, the skin of the metahuman is actually clipping through the clothing or it's not fitting correctly, well, the number one thing you wanna check is that the body type of your metahuman matches what the manufacturer of those clothes recommends to use. Because there are different body types available for the metahumans and they typically are creating these clothings based on one specific body type. So. 
You want to go first to the manufacturer's page of that clothing that you got, check the description and see what body type it recommends to use. Then to check the body type that you're currently using, you want to again go into the blueprint, click on the body section on the left side, and then go over to the right here and you can actually see what body type you're using. We're using the medium narrow body. Now, a lot of the times, a lot of the clothing I've seen on the marketplace uses the tall narrow body, the T-A-L narrow body. So if I were to apply some clothing to this character, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't fit because it's using a different body. Now, in order to change the body type of your metahuman, the preset ones don't really give you any options when you're importing them through Bridge. So what you have to do is actually go to the metahuman creator website, choose the metahuman that you want to modify. Again, we're using the tarot character. Then we're gonna go over to proportions under body. So if you have a particular clothing in mind from the fab marketplace you're wanting to use, you wanna reference that and then choose the body type here. So a lot of the times I'm seeing that tall, narrow, which is this one up here in the top right, is the one that a lot of them are using. And now he's using the correct body type. And so then you just want to go back out to my metahumans. It's going to save the changes you made. And then you would re-import that character using bridge. And now it will have the correct body type so you can apply those clothes. Now, a really great alternative to this method is to use something like Meta Tailor. This is a software designed to custom fit clothing to 3D characters. And you can do this for metahumans. I actually did this very recently for a project I'm currently working on. And so if you'd like to see a breakdown, see a workflow video of that. I do plan on doing some content around that, but let me know in the comments below if that's something you're interested in seeing. And lastly, one of the most common things I've run into is the eyes of your metahuman looking really strange if there's certain kinds of materials or things passing in front of your metahuman, something like smoke. I've used Niagara explosions and VDBs in the past, and if I ever have something going in front of the eyes of the metahuman, the eyes look very dark and just don't render correctly. So I've got an example here of a Niagara system kicking up some dust, and if we actually kind of go down here and look through the dust, see how his eyes are kind of like poking through, but like we shouldn't be able really able to see them. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to once again go into the blueprint of our metahuman. And if you click on the face and come over here to the materials, you're going to see one that we need to look at, which is the MI underscore I occlusion instance. Open that up and then scroll all the way down until you see the M underscore I occlusion. This is the master material for the I occlusion. This is a translucent material that is used on the eye. We want to look at the translucency pass and we're basically telling it how to render the depth of field, like what order should it be rendering based on this material? You know, should it be rendering before or after the depth of field? And I found that, you know, different scenarios call for a different setting here. So if you notice that the eyes of your metahuman look really dark or odd, especially when you're looking through something like smoke or an explosion or even sometimes like glass, that's the first place you should look. So you can change this to either before or after depth of field and you can see which one is going to work better for your scenario. So if I switch it to before depth of field and I hit save, you can see now the eyes are kind of rendering correctly. They're not poking through as we have the smoke in front of them. It's kind of making them more hazy and harder to see go through it. Now he's clear and it's rendering more correctly. And so I've found that, that one setting can really fix a lot of weird issues when you're kind of looking through something like smoke or an explosion or something like that. So that's a good setting to check first to see if that fixes your issue. And there you go. Those are my five most common metahuman issues that I've run into in the past. And I just want to kind of put these all together for you guys to see if that could help you whenever you're using metahumans in your projects. And if you're looking for more metahuman goodness, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm actually working on a short film in Unreal Engine right now for the Secrets of the Luminara Challenge by Kitbash 3D. This is the most ambitious project I have ever done to date. And I'm getting to try a lot of new tools and features in Unreal that I normally don't get to use. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel once that short film drops here in the next few weeks. And I've got a lot of BTS and tutorial content planned around that short film. So there's a lot of good content coming. And hey, if you found this video useful, if it helped you out, please leave a like. And hey, check out our Discord channel. This is a place where you can come and surround yourself with other people in the virtual production community. And as always, I'm David Stapp with Virtual Production Insider, and we'll see you guys next time.